Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on narrative lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. I'm Joy J. Moore. This is the podcast for December 11th, 2022. And the text is Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. It is uh, light to the nations. Now, just a word. This passage has previously been considered one of the so-called four servant song songs in Second Isaiah. The others are in chapter 49 and 50 and then 52 to 53. That designation has generally has um, generally fallen out of favor because the word servant occurs all over Second Isaiah, not just in these things. And there's no reason to think that they were ever a pre-existing unit until uh, some German decided they were 100 years ago. <laughs> However, here's what's important. The text introduces an unnamed figure called my servant. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. And this servant in some way is identified with in exile Israel, whether it's all of Israel slash Judah in exile or a particular figure Within Israel, it seems very clear, um, or a future Messiah, uh, a.k.a. Jesus. Uh, all of those are possibilities, and in fact, all should uh, echo around. And God here says, not only will I redeem, rescue, save my hero, but I got a mission. I have a mission for uh, my servant. And here is a very strange phrase in Hebrew. In fact, there's, there's nothing like it anywhere else. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind. So what are we to make of this? Well, I think if you go back over the Bible, the Old Testament, there are four major disruptive moments. The first is the Tower of Babel. The second is uh, uh, slavery in Egypt. Um, the third is uh, really this time of exile. And so if we just uh, we start with those, God's response after these disruptions is not only to form or reform the people, but to give them a mission. So Abraham and Sarah are given the mission, blessed to be a blessing to the nations. Uh, we had that this earlier this fall after the, uh, the exodus, the people are to be the priestly kingdom. And here after the exile, they are to be a covenant to the people alike to the nations. I think the reforming and then re-energizing through mission, and that has all things to say for the Christian life, for the congregational life coming out of covid all, um, to our common uh, calling as a Christian people. I really appreciate that, Rolf. It's a recognition that God has never given up on God's original intention, which is the forming of a people. Um, the only time in all creation God says not like this is when God creates the human alone. And so from that time, we have the story of the forming of community, a forming of a people. And as you noted uh, in, at, at the Tower of Babel, uh, what we get with uh, the promise made to all the nations through the descendants of Abraham and Sarah is um, this um, blessed to be a blessing. And so um, what does it look like for the people of God to, and I'm thinking a few weeks back, to practice righteousness? When we were looking at Micah, um, what you know, um, what God has required, um, this favoring of kindness, of mercy, this practicing of justice, it looks like this and, and very similar to the words that Jesus will, will, will preach in, uh, as recorded in Luke. Um, but God is always having a people that will be evidence of God's goodness, of God's righteousness, of God's grace, of God's mercy. And we've, we've, we've just seen that, uh, in, um, in looking at Esther, which resembles, um, um, Moses and Daniel and, 
I'm get, I got it out of order again, uh, Moses and <laughs> Joseph and Daniel. Um, and so here we are in uh, this uh, season that lends ourselves to expecting the inbreaking of God, not just rehearsing that Christ has come, but knowing that that God is not done yet. And so what is it, as you said, Ralph, that the people are God are to look like as a promise to all the world that God is, that God is good, and that God hasn't given up on forming a people who practice justice? I love that, I, uh, both of you. I, I hadn't thought about that commissioning, you know, after a, a great disruption, but I, I think that really does speak to us as a church coming out of covid or a world coming out of COVID, you know, what is, what is the church to be a light to the nations after this very hard time, a very dark time. Um, and I know, I know we're not completely out of COVID, but uh, we, we see the light at the end of the tunnel, even if it's not quite here yet. What strikes me uh, here is this, uh, um, I'm looking at verse three, a bruise or verse, starting in verse two, he will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed. I, the, the, the character of this commissioning or this character of this uh, coming is not, um, you know, a, a, a leader with a mighty army behind him, uh, but... A, a more gentle thing, a, 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 a more unexpected way of, of, of arriving, a more unexpected way of establishing justice. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. I, I don't know what, what that means, uh, to be perfectly honest. But the, the thing that I think about is, you know, people who are weary, right? People who maybe don't have a lot of faith or are finding it hard to muster uh, energy or muster faith or muster hope, uh, you know, the bruised reed and the dimly burning wick, right? Almost out. <laughs> the, the dimly burning wick that is almost out. Uh, and yet the one who, the one who comes, the one we call Messiah, uh, does not extinguish, does not break, does not, um, does not destroy those, but instead, uh, to go back a couple of chapters, right, carries them like a, a shepherd carries a sheep. Um, so, uh, yeah, the character of this uh, justice coming, the character of this righteousness uh, is something that gives me hope. And that's, I think, why this text has become a messianic text, is that Jesus so embodied this, that it was, it, how do I describe what I'm experiencing, and these words from Isaiah, not what we expected. If we if we fast forward to the presence of Jesus, not the kind of Messiah that Israel was expecting when its enemies were Babylon and Persia and Assyria and then Rome. Um, they wanted someone who was going to crush, overpower, uh, to to show how great. Uh, and strong, and and this promise of someone who is gentle and someone who is patient and someone who brings healing, that gives us hope today in the midst of where the very people of God seem to be the ones who are trying to power over, and yet God has not given up on saying, my approach is one of gentleness, one of kindness, and will we be a folk? A, a community whose behavior of kindness and righteousness, of liberating those who are are held captive, of giving light in the midst of darkness, of setting the prisoners free, um, uh, will we practice that with such um, a unique um, uh, character? that folks will say this, this looks like the promise of the prophet Isaiah.